Hello, my name is Claire McDowell from Bad Bird Crafts and I'm a wildlife artist. I live in Coleraine, which is right up on the north coast of Northern Ireland. And you're very welcome to my children's painting workshop. I love nothing better than to create art, either paintings, a bit like this guy, or sculptures, a bit like these guys, of the wildlife and birds that live around our beautiful countryside. So in today's workshop, I'm going to teach you some really easy techniques that will allow you to create a colourful, dramatic, dynamic wildlife portrait, a bit like this one. And the great thing about this workshop is that you don't need to be a fantastic painter to get started. And that once you've learned these techniques, you can create lots of colourful pieces of art that you're going to want to hang on your walls or put in your windows or gift to someone in your family. So let's get started. So here are the things that we're going to need in order to make our wildlife portrait. You're going to need a canvas. Or if you don't have one of these at home, you can use a large piece of white drawing paper or even some old wallpaper or cardboard that you have lying around the house. You're also going to need a thin piece of card that you can cut your template out from. We're going to need some scissors and you can get someone who looks after you to help you cut out. We're going to need a pencil and a rubber. And of course, some paints. The best paints to use are poster paints or watercolour paints, and you'll need a plate to mix them on. You'll need some paint brushes, and of course, some water. I'm going to use Artist Masking Fluid for my portrait, but if you don't have this or can't find it, you can use a white crayon or even an old white candle. And of course, we're going to need a straw. So the first thing we want to do is decide what animal silhouette we're going to use. There are lots of templates you can download from the internet to help you. And you want to make sure that your silhouette is simple enough so it's very easy to draw around and that it's really easy to tell what it is once you've finished your portrait. Once you've printed off your silhouette, or drawn it, simply cut around the paper copy with your scissors. I'm using a tawny oil today. Once you've cut your template out of paper, place that onto the thin card and draw around it. Next, Cut your shape out of your card and this is going to be the template that you'll use to draw around to put your animal silhouette onto your canvas. Place your card template right in the middle of your canvas or your drawing sheet and make sure you're happy with where it is before you draw around. And then using your pencil, lightly trace around the shape. Take your time, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to be very clear. Remember, don't lean too heavily because we don't want to see the pencil outline on our finished portrait. When you're happy with your silhouette, using your artist masking fluid or your crayon or your wax, you want to fill in the entire shape. The important part here is to make sure that the edges are completely covered in wax or masking fluid. And this is what's going to stop the paint going into your silhouette shape. Make sure the whole area is covered. So once your whole shape is completely filled in and you're really happy with it, Put it to one side to dry. Now it's time to mix our paints. So select the colours that you want to use on your portrait. You can use as many or as few as you like. And simply put a blob of each colour around the side of your plate. Remember, you need to use paint that are water-based 
so that you can mix them with water and get them to move around your canvas. Take a large paintbrush, place a little bit of water in the middle of your plate. And once you're sure that your canvas is dry, we're ready to start. Remember, the masking fluid has to be really dry or else the paint will simply leak into the middle. So taking a good splash of water, start with the darkest colour first. And place a few blobs of colour around the outside edge of your silhouette. Just work on a small area first of all, because you want to be able to move the paint before it dries. And then using your straw, get right down close to your canvas and blow and spread that paint right across to the outside edge. Keep adding colour around the outside of your shape, a few blobs at a time, and then use your straw to move the paint across the canvas. You'll figure out that different ways move the paint in different directions. And remember, you want to put the paint right close to the edge of your outline so that there aren't any white gaps. You can add a little bit more water to your paint to get different effects. And simply turn the canvas around, keeping it flat so that you can move the paint outwards. Washing your brush, take your next colour and start to move around the outside of your shape again. You'll see that the colours start to mix together and overlap and this is exactly the kind of effect that we want. This is a really cool way of learning how colours mix together to make new colours. Remember to keep turning your canvas around but always keep it flat. When you're happy with your finished canvas, leave it to dry. Remember, it's really important to keep it completely flat or else the paint will run in the wrong direction. If you use masking fluid, once it's completely dry, you can begin to take it off. Use your pencil eraser to begin at one side and peel the masking fluid away. To reveal your silhouette. Use the pencil eraser to help you lift off the last little bits of masking fluid. Our wildlife portrait is finished. Hopefully you really enjoyed that and you'll be able to use this technique to create lots of new pieces of art. I really hope you enjoyed making this piece of art with me. And now that you've learned how to do this, keep experimenting with different animals, different shapes and different colours and who knows what you will be able to create. Virtual Hockey Camp. My name is Mark McKeon and I'm the Everyday Active Coach for Cosmic Coast and Glens. So just be careful whenever you're practicing at home, make sure you have a parent or guardian with you, you have enough space and whatever equipment you can get your hands on, that's going to be great. So you will need a stick and a ball and maybe some cones or something to mark out an area. Stick to the guidelines regarding social distancing and if you do have brothers or sisters who want to take part, 
that's going to be a good idea. Let's get started. Okay, so day one, our topic is going to be moving with the ball. Before we do that, we're going to get a little warm up set up. So I've got four cones, I'm going to mark out a square, and then we'll get Stephen to demonstrate. For this drill, we won't need a stick or a ball, so I'm going to ask Stephen to stand inside the square. Okay, I'm going to ask him to get on his toes, ready to move, I'm going to shout a colour. Once I shout the colour, he's going to run as fast as he can, touch the cone with his hand, and get back to the middle of the square. Red. Orange. Blue. White. Okay, so we're going to challenge Stephen a little bit more, so I'm going to ask him to start in the press-up position. Blue. Red. Okay, this time Stephen's going to sit with his legs crossed. Hands on top of his head. When I shoot the colour, he's going to get up as fast as he can. Orange! <laughs> and back down again. Blue! Okay, last one. This time it's going to be flat on his back. And do some snow angels. That's it. And white! Very good. Okay, now it's your chance. Give that a try. So today we're going to work, work on moving with the balls. So the first thing we're going to do is how do we hold the stick. So, Stephen's left hand is going to be at the top, right hand about halfway down, maybe slightly further. Okay? On the hockey stick we have a flat side and a rounded side, so we're going to try and keep the ball on the flat side. Stephen's going to bend his knees, Get down low to the ball, low to the ground and keep the ball on his flat side. So I'm gonna ask Stephen, can he move inside the square only using the flat side of the stick? As you may have seen, when Stephen wanted to stop the ball, he wrapped the stick around the ball in front to stop it, and then moved on using the flat side of a stick. So this time I'm going to shout out red light and green light. If I say green light, Stephen's going to move with the ball. When I shout red light, he's going to stop the ball using that technique. Green light. Red light. 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 So, so far we've learned how to move with the ball, keep the ball on the flat side of our stick, how to stop the ball. So now we're going to look at how we can change direction by using a 180 spin. So the technique we're going to use, Stephen's going to tuck his left, left elbow in close to his body, keep the ball very close to the stick and he's going to turn to his left to change direction. So let's see Stephen give it a try. So now we'll ask Stephen to do as many turns inside the square as he can and you can have a go at home.
Excellent. So, first challenge of the day, we're going to complete the square round the outside of the square using our turn as fast as we can. So, Stephen will start on the blue square, blue cone, sorry. And if you have a parent, a brother, sister home, they can time you to see how long it takes. Ready and go. Excellent. We'll try it the other way. So going the opposite direction, a little bit harder. Concentrate on your footwork to get your feet around the outside of the ball. Ready, go. Our pyramid challenge again running with the ball uh, and bringing in our turn. Okay, so for the first exercise, when you move out, okay, the ball stays in your stick, turn strong, you go back in, okay, you turn, you go out to number two, turn again, turn strong all the time. Number three, and then eventually the longer one. Okay, just a couple of things to remember when you're doing that. Always, uh, when you're doing a turn, okay, keep the ball in your stick, keep the ball close to your body, turn around nice and tight to the cone. When we're moving up and down the cones, what we want to see is that you're running and your head stays up and your eyes are up. So we're here, get the cone, spin right. Okay, you're going to have a wee go at that. Um, we'll do two sets of runs, okay, first and back, second back, third back, fourth back, and do that two times. Okay, this time when we're doing our turn, okay, you go out on the, the left hand side of the cones, okay, ball stays in the stick again, we move out, you move your feet round quickly, you drop your left hand, goes towards the ground, Move your feet round, okay? So again, we're going to do the pyramid. So you're out to your first. Drop the left hand, move your feet round. Back in again. Out to number two. Left hand goes down, feet goes right, and you raise up. Then we finish on the longer one, number four, okay? So we'll stay this thing. Right. I'm back in, okay? So permits again, one, two, three, four, and do that uh, two times. This time, uh, just to challenge yourself with turning both ways, okay, so we've got a little slalom course. Again, if, you've, uh, if you have markers at home, don't worry, just use anything you can use, uh, cans of beans, just kept running, just as a wee marker. So just starting on one side, okay, we're moving the ball across, we get our feet round, across to the other side, feet round again, over to the other side, and then take it back. Right, have another go, okay, so just ball stays in the stick. Going out to your left hand side, move your feet right, your left hand drops down, turn there with a turn, and then back in. Okay, so if you set that up, uh, we want you to have 20 tries at that, okay, just moving in and out and a slalom. Alright, once you've done 20 of those, then what we'd like you to do, okay, Mark, if you just want to set the cones down. Here. You can go anywhere at all, okay, and just do your practice, your turns, your outside turn, your outside turn, okay, right any of the cones. Just use 
said outside turn, inside, outside again. Okay, so you try that one, it's a little course set up, have a go at that, do it for about two minutes, okay, just weaving in and out, okay, as if you're playing maybe in a game, you're trying to get past the defender, it's a really good skill to have. Number five, Summer Scheme Quiz. Round number one, general knowledge. Number one, what instrument does a doctor use to learn if a person has a fever? Number two, what is a botanist study? Number three, what color is the center of the target in archery? Number four, in the movie The Lion King, what kind of animal is Timon? Number five, what is the third planet from the sun? Number six, which of the seven dwarfs was beardless? Number seven, in which country did Joan of Arc lead an army? Number eight, what does a carnivore eat? Number nine, which ocean is frozen for most of the year? And number 10, what is the center of a hurricane called? Round number two, geography questions. Number one, name the smallest country in the world. Number two, what colours are in the Union flag of Great Britain? Number three, what is the capital city of Spain? Number four, name the only island in the world where lemurs live. Number five, what country are the pyramids in? Number six, what country was due to host the Olympics in 2020? Number seven, in what county in England is Land's End? Number eight, what's the highest mountain in the world? Number nine, name two countries in Central America. And number 10, which country invented tea? Okay, round number three, these are film questions. Number one, what is the name of the newspaper where Peter Parker works in Spider-Man? Number two, which Disney film does the song When You Wish Upon a Star come from? Number three, what is the name of Dorothy's dog in The Wizard of Oz? Number four, which movie features two characters called Simba and Mufasa? Number five, how many children does Mary Poppins have to look after? Number six, in the movie Polar Express, where did the young boy travel to by train? Number seven, who wrote Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Number eight, what is the name of the Disney character who plays the Little Mermaid? Number nine, what C is a fairy tale character who meets her prince at a ball? 
Number 10, which Disney movie features a song called The Bear Necessity? Okay, answers to round one, general knowledge. Number one, thermometer. Number two, plants. Number three, gold. Number four, meerkat. Number five, earth. Number six, dopey. Number seven, France. Number eight, meat. Number nine, arctic. And number 10, I. Okay, right, number two answers. Number one, Vatican City. Number two, red, white, and blue. Number three, Madrid. Number four, Madagascar. Number five, Egypt. Number six, Japan. Number seven, Cornwall. Number eight, Everest. Number nine, Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, Belize, Peru, Chile, Guatemala, or Costa Rica. Number 10, China. And the answers to number three, film questions. Number one, The Daily Bugle. Number two, P Pinocchio. Number three, Toto. Number four, the Lion King. Number five, two. Number six, the North Pole. Number seven, Roald Dahl. Number eight, Ariel. Number nine, Cinderella. And number ten, The Jungle Book.